What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video here on Muddy Beards 4x4. Today, Saturday, when I'm filming this, uh, I'm supposed to be picking up my family at Salt Lake City uh, with my truck, my trailer, Jeep, on our way to EJS 2020. Obviously, from the coronavirus, it's now canceled. Can't even go there. Can't get a hotel, anything. So, uh, actually, the local trails are actually closed. The whole state's shut down here in Washington. Can't even go to the local trails, so literally stuck at home. Uh, had a couple weeks off of work, and I finally decided to stop being lazy and actually get some stuff done on the Jeep uh, my last couple days before I got to go back to work. So this video is going to be probably one of the most requested uh, videos since I started this channel. Uh, a lot of people ask me about this, and I never finished it. So it's the factory seat uh, five-point harness pass-through that I installed right here. I did that back in 2016 and I never finished it. I never installed the harness bar or the five point or four point harnesses and I never finished the passenger side. So I have all the parts now and uh, I'm gonna show you how to install this on the passenger side. I'm gonna install the harness bar and uh, I believe four point harnesses. I have a few different harnesses uh, that I can install I bought over the past couple years. Probably gonna install the four point harness. Uh, we'll kind of see how it goes. Speaking of COVID-19, Olight is having a charity sale Friday, April 10th, where we're 100% of all sales that day will be used for medical supplies to be donated here in the U.S. or your corresponding country. They have a list on their website tells you what countries uh, are they're participating with. They also have two exclusive flashlights going to be released on Friday, April 10th. So make sure you check it out. They're 30% off. I will leave a link in the description so you guys can check it out. Uh, so Friday, April 10th, 30% off charity sale. 100% proceeds going towards medical supplies. Now back to the video. Okay, so we got the seat all cleaned up decently and uh, have it down on the ground where I can work on it. There's going to be, uh, on my particular seat, this one is a zipper and hopefully it's not too messed up and you can unzip it. Some might have like a, a hook and clip, uh, like a hook closure that you'd use like a pocket screwdriver or something to get it out. And there's no, uh, you know, little tab on here to... To grab so you might need to use something like a pocket screwdriver or something hopefully uh, this can unzip hi okay real quick because uh, this actually runs in between it's gonna be hard to see the frame you actually are not gonna be able to get this off without removing this uh, top piece of the frame and slipping this underneath it so you can get the cover off. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but basically it's just a T50. Actually it's a T40 or 45. Dang it. Okay, it's a T45. And this bolt goes through the frame, the top and the bottom piece of the frame. And just pop that out. And then I will fish Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Ow. Everything's kind of sharp in here too, by the way. So just maybe wear gloves. Uh, get underneath there. Boom. There we go. Now we got that. Like for real, every edge is sharp in this thing. I cut myself a lot and I forgot about that. There we go. Now we can pull the cover off. Found some money, seven cents. The harness pass-through that I am using is Dragonfire Racing uh, harness pass-through for a Polaris Razor. 
Now this is on Amazon. It's about, I believe, $21. The price kind of changes depending on things. Uh, but it's around $21, $25. I will leave a link in the description to this harness uh, pass-through. I took the template that they had in the kit and cut it out accordingly. Everyone is gonna have a different setup on this based on how tall they are, different body types and everything. So I'm gonna put the bottom of this right in the middle of these two holes. So it'll look about like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the template and put it on the back side because it's more flat. It's gonna be tough to put it on this side. So I'm gonna put it on the back side with the bottom of it just in the center here of this bottom hole and then mark out and then cut it off. You need to cut out basically a backbone that's gonna attach both of these pieces together. This is 3 16 scrap I got laying around. You could probably go smaller than this, but this is just what I have. The maximum that we can go based on the center piece here is two inches. Go a little bit under, so this is already a certain size, so. And uh, I'll just keep it with that. And I'll probably wanna go about seven inches. So then I'll cut this piece out and weld it together. So before I can actually weld this on, I need to modify these uh, pass-through brackets because they snap together like this right here. And this, this plate has to go through the middle of it. You can use, you know, like a razor blade or something, uh, but it takes time. You might have something better to cut it. I just use a cutoff wheel. Uh, you just gotta be really careful because it just melts it and it's gonna fling hot plastic on you. Uh, so make sure you wear a long jacket and face shield and all that fun stuff. I'm using electrical tape to hold the two pieces together so I can show you, see there's a slot right here now that I cut out. Like I said, with the cutoff wheel is not very precise. It's kind of messy. And uh, you're never gonna see it though, which is good. And I'm holding it together with this because I don't wanna snap it together because it will be a pain in the butt to unsnap each one of these once you snap it together each side. So now with the center section modified and cut out, so you can see it there, this will slide through the middle of it. Boom, just like that. Using a tape measure and a level, make sure that everything is square and centered and exactly where you want it before you tack weld it in. Definitely don't need to fully weld this in. Way overkill. Just a couple of stitch welds, top, side, bottom, side, side. Should be good to go. It's not going anywhere. Once you get the foam part back on, you just wanna take a razor blade, make sure it's a brand new sharp one to make your life a lot easier. You can just feel through, push through it, and you can feel the edge of it and start cutting at that edge. Once you get a chunk out, you can kind of see and feel inside of there and just start cutting away what you can until you get to that center section. You don't want to cut that center section out. Seat foam, pretty much cut out how I want it. You can kind of move it around and make it fit. So you don't want to cut too much out. Uh, cut a little bit less than you want 
and it will conform around it. Also, cut this out to a much bigger uh, hole in the center that's going to accommodate the foam here in the center. Well, that's it guys. I was able to get it snapped in and I am 100% sure that you can do a better job than me at cutting this out. Be a little bit more careful than I did. Uh, I cut a little bit too much on the edge here and that little one here in the back just does not look very good as well. Cut it a little bit too big in a couple spots. It's embarrassing because I know better, right? Like I just cut it too much here and too much here and uh, you know, it's gonna be up against, the harness bar is gonna be right here, and then the harness will be coming through here, so you won't even be able to see it unless you're in the back seat and looking directly at it. But I'm showing you guys anyways because I make mistakes, and uh, this one I just rushed it, and uh, you know, this is what happens. So just take your time, is all I'm trying to say. Hopefully you guys can take this information and do a better job than I did on this passenger seat one or even figure out something to do in the middle that makes it a little bit nicer. Uh, let me know. Let me know how it turns out if you try it. And just so you know, guys, this uh, is for an off-road use only type of vehicle. I would not modify a factory seat in a street driven vehicle. And just based on time, I'm gonna make this a two part series. Second video is gonna be the four point harness install on these front two seats, and we're gonna fabricate a harness bar. Thanks for watching, as always. If you wanna follow us on social media, we are at Muddybeards 4x4. Visit our website, muddybeards4x4.com. All the links are in the description. The uh, parts and everything, links in the description on our Amazon store. Make sure you check it out and we will see you on the trail, hopefully when they open up.